Our sixth speaker, I'm oh, delighted to have him. His business is to do with um, developing online and offline communities um, involved in you know, analyzing and supporting people in terms of putting them in contact with sort of great business leaders and the, th the thoughts of great CEOs. His passions, though, he said, three very diverse things. He said, firstly, his beautiful young wife, which is wonderful. His business is his second passion, and the great outdoors is his third passion, which caused me to think these are three very different things. It must be very hard to satisfy all three of those at the same time, unless... <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> Un ponies. <laughs> unless, of course, his wife is happy taking long walks with him, listening to him talking about his business. So could you please help me welcome to the front, Anthony Gell. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, tough times never last, but tough people do. How much machoism is there implied in that statement? It is so damn tough, isn't it? Well, the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is we don't need to be that tough, actually. If we can, for tonight, say there's some correlation between being tough and being persistent, then we don't need to be that tough. All we have to do is follow one or two universal principles of success, and we can achieve that persistence that a lot of people try to aspire to. But the first thing I would just like to say, if I can, is to debunk this whole thing about quitting. Everyone says that to be tough, you should never quit. To succeed, you should never quit. Well, in some instances, I would say... <laughs> great timing. I, <laughs> I would say that the right thing to do is to quit. I know that sounds ironic, but let's just look at this for, example, for, a, for a second. To quit, if you're a smoker and you're on drugs, I would argue you should probably quit. <laughs> if you are thoroughly miserable at your job and you've been doing it for such a long time, again, I would argue you should quit. In fact, I've got a friend of mine who is the most spiritual person that I have ever met. She's Asian, she's just, you, she, all she talks about is chakras, her paintings, her oral charts, I mean, sorry, uh, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> she, she, that's all she talks about. She's absolutely passionate about this. And then one day she decided, you know what she's got to do? She's got to get a proper job, right? And so then she, through her contacts with her father and father, she then found a job at J.P. Morgan on the trading desk on the left field of the debt collection or something, right? But it was very, very left brain. But because she had had this job, and it was J.P. Morgan, she decided, hey, I'm not going to quit because J.P. Morgan is such a great company. Indeed it is. But the position that she had was terrible for her. Two years in, she was absolutely miserable. Three years in, even more miserable. At four years, I went to go and see her, and I said, for goodness sake, you've got to quit. And she said, no, 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 I'm not quitting. No, 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 it's not me. At five years in, it looked like she'd been doing this job for 50 years. And at seven years in... You could hardly recognize her. No, it's seven years in. She eventually took my advice and she quit. But ladies and gentlemen, if you're thoroughly miserable at work or you're not satisfied, then it's your life. You have to move in order to be uh, satisfied and find something you're genuinely passionate about. You see, this whole toughness thing, right? You don't have to be that tough if, in actual fact, you simply follow a vision and a passion that you are inspired by. You see, if you're climbing Mount Everest, and that's your goal, and you're truly inspired by that goal, then you, know, you have a few tough days and probably a few tough nights. But you don't care, because you know why? Because you're climbing Mount Everest. That's a heck of a goal. You're inspired by that goal. If you're climbing Mount mm, couldn't care or less, then that's not going to get you very far when you have some tough days. And so the first thing, and that's why all these management consultants talk about vision, constantly. They talk about vision, vision. Well, have you got a vision for your life? Have your, has your company got a vision? Because if it hasn't and it's not inspiring, the first thing you should do is grab a piece of paper after this, uh, not after me, but after the end, um, and just write that down, what is really inspiring, and then, and then share it and achieve it. The third thing is really these tough people, they're not so tough. They just do what they love to do, right? I mean... Uh, there's some things that I am absolutely, and I'll share it with you, I'll be honest, absolutely terrible at. <laughs> right? There's some things that I'm pretty good at and that I'm going to try and strive to get better at doing. And there's some things, ladies and gentlemen, that you are absolutely gifted at, that you are on this planet to do. 
And so simply, you just have to keep on looking until you find those things that you love to do and you're good at doing. You see, when you bring those two things together, that's when you'll find uh, greatness. In fact, I went back to this, this friend at seven years back in the bank, if you remember, and I said to her, what is it that you really love to do? What is it you did before you joined J.P. Morgan? And she said, well, I was a photographer. And I loved taking photographs. I said, well, become a photographer. And she said, no, 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 I can't because, you know, I need to pay the bills. I need to pay the bills and all these things. And, you know, I can empathize with that. There is bills to be paid. But if you have a thing or two that you absolutely love to do, then what I told her to do is to take it as her secondary income stream, to try it in the evenings, to try it on the weekends. And if she does that, then what she can find is maybe over time, that secondary income stream becomes her primary one when that income takes over her predominant income at the bank. And you know what? She's been doing it now for four years, and she is ah, she's not making quite as much money, but she is so inspired by what she's doing. So ladies and gentlemen, if there's something that you really love to do, then I suggest you, really, you, you think about it, you write it down, and you go about doing it. Absolutely essential. So ladies and gentlemen, so to finish this today, I, I want to say thank you for your time. And you don't have to be tough in that sense of the sort of macho term. All you really need to do is to make sure you quit the things that you don't like to do. And secondly, you go and find a vision that it truly inspires you, and then simply do the things that you genuinely love to do. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do these things, you will truly be unstoppable. Thank you. Thank you very much.